stop a bankruptcy. <coughs> I'd like to do this. I'd like to take one more question and have each of our panelists close with a minute, uh, a moment of wisdom that they'd like to impart upon the uh, audience, including this. I think this is good. I want to have them uh, throw out there a book that each of you, Steve, I already know what your book's going to be. A book that they, a book that they recommend that each of you read because one thing that we need to do is we need to be intellectual warriors too. We need to be able to expound upon why to the citizenry as a whole it's imperative that our side win and the other side loses. Not just bumper sticker cliches, but be able to have an intelligent discussion as to why freedom and the individual is better than the government. So I'd like to have each of them think about that book that they brought to you. Yes, ma'am, last question right there. And then we'll stop, and for those of you that want to stick around, these guys, you don't get them very easily all in the same room at the same time. So what I'd like to do is I'll step down and talk and ask questions until they kick us out of the room. So why don't we do that? We'll be off program, but I, I'll just throw that out to everybody. Yes, ma'am. I'm president of the Capistrano Unified School Board. Oh boy, you guys have been in the news a little bit. We cut the 10% on our administrators a year ago. We held the line and had the Waited for the union, they didn't come to the table, we imposed, they struck. We set a new standard for having backbone, doing the hard work, and not backing down. What we ask is the support of the Republican Party for those in school districts who have held the line. And we need people to be aware. We have a budget of over 400 million if you include our federal stream. Mm -hmm. We have the smallest administrative staff in the state, it's the ninth largest district. We are the second largest employer in Orange County with over 4,300 employees. And we did the job, and we held the line. And I've had my life threatened. I've had my neighbors cursed at. I've been marched out of my home, and my property defaced. And this is just part and parcel. But I've never said one rude word about the union. So I just hope that we get the support from your teams, from your people. I, I'm very aware of the work that Supervisor Morlock has done for a long time, but in the school districts we have a huge job and we hope we have the support of those of you who are also places of influence. Thank, Thank you. you. book that's influenced me the most is uh, the Bible. I uh, used to worship reason and myself, and uh, even though I worked for ABC and believed in free markets, I really had no transcendental foundation uh, for what I was doing. And uh, now I've come to uh, know Jesus Christ. And uh, I know that myself, just like all the people we've been talking about, the union people, I have a tendency toward corruption, collectivism, coercion. I want to be dictator, I want money to go from others to me, I want ambition, power, and you know, I think you need uh, something higher than yourself, uh, in my case, the uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to uh, uh, be in control of my life and put me in my proper place. Thank you. Well, it ain't the Bible, but I suggest uh, rule, Rules for Radicals. It's, a, I this book. it's not a left-wing book. It's not anybody who wants to, uh, anyone who wants to dramatically change things. And I, I just, real quick story, we were a fellow there talking about being on a school board. I went to a school board meeting in uh, Fullerton, and uh, nobody was there, right? This was the last one I went to, and uh, there were like two or three people there. And the back of the room was lined by t-shirt wearing school employees, not the teachers, the uh, janitors and all the people who do those things that could easily be outsourced. And they were standing there in the back. And how do you think the board voted? So we have to, you know, go out and do those things. And the books like Rules for Radicals, look, we're, we're talking about training manuals here. And that's what that is. And then I will, two words, Jim Silva. The reason I mention this man's name is we have to name names. And he's a Republican assemblyman who voted three times, uh, twice for retroactive pension increases and once for a PLA. So I'm just, I'm just saying, I'll Todd Spitzer, I'll name other names. These are when I was at the newspaper, I just named the names. It's not that they're overall bad people, but let's name names. Let's point out who these people are who are doing this. So maybe they'll stop doing it, and or other people will get elected who won't, won't do it. You know, and if you gotta twist somebody's arm all the time. I fundamentally understand, fundamentally understand how to do the right thing rather than have to have their arms twisted. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs>
Oh, Saul Alinsky. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Saul Alinsky. Yeah, you get it probably for 99 cents on Amazon. Great stuff. Great stuff. Just forget that. Just go on the internet and print it up. I uh, the, the book I would recommend is is the one that we uh, obviously spent a lot of time on today is Plunder. If you haven't read it, I second that. I was still. I did a few on it, so I had to do it. Um, in, in terms of party wisdom, I have looked at perhaps 3,000 city and county budgets over the past 15 years. I've been working in the area of government reform, and whenever we would put together a, a restructuring plan. There would be some legal issues we'd have to identify, some financial assessments we'd have to do, some operational reviews. But eventually, we always would come up with a technical plan that would save that government entity from bankruptcy, that would turn things around over a period of time and make them whole again and allow them to serve constituents. Our problem is not what technically should we do. Because the best technical plan still does not have one essential ingredient, and that is a spine, a backbone. And that's where, really, the Republican Party, that's where our candidates, that's where the grassroots have to come in. You have to be a conscience. You have to give them that backbone. You have to back them up and force them to do those things that we know we have to do. And I wish all of our elected officials would simply just go into office and forget about re-election and say, I'm here to accomplish a mission. I do not care about the next election. <laughs> because frankly, if you don't, you don't want to be in office when it all comes crumbling down. <laughs> here, here. Uh, a few years ago, I was asked to testify before the Public Employee Post, Post Employment Benefit Commission that Arnold Schwarzenegger set up. Arnold's been a governor that doesn't really choose action. He, he chooses commissions. Uh, and this commission had 12 members, six of which were union leaders. And so I was on a panel sort of like this in front of these 12 individuals. And one of the panelists was the union leader for the fire authority in Orange County. And he explained to the commission that they had been able to resolve their retiree medical plan liability by converting from a DB to a DC. All of a sudden, Ron Cottingham, president of CORAC, his officers, union, one of the largest Jews in the state, jumped out of his seat and said, I thought we had a deal. Really? I thought we had a deal. I thought we weren't going DC. We all agreed. It was an amazing moment. I was so glad to have been there. <laughs> because it said immediately, hey, this is a phony commission. And when this report comes out, it's going to be a bust. The union leader had to say, I'm sorry, Mr. Cunningham, I'm referring to my retiree medical plan, not my pension plan. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> but it just shows you, you know, what, what did that report say at the end of the day? We, we have an unfunded liability of $118 billion pay it. And you're the payors. <laughs> so I want to say a couple things. One is they have, a, they have a deal. We're not going to be able to negotiate defined contribution plans as much as we think that's the right answer. We've tried to do it on the, at the initiative level and Arnold Schwarzenegger pulled our, uh, our rug right from underneath us, the Jonathan Pauls, the Carl DeMiles. We all we're working together with Keith Richmond to get signatures to, to take care of in 05, and that was James. The money people are saying, you know, the people don't get it yet, so why should we put up 20 million if they're gonna spend 40, 80, 100 million on the union side and we lose? So we've been working on the legislative end. Steve's already talking about SB 919 by Hollingsworth, you know, dead on the line. It's just not in this state, not in this capital. It's owned by the labor union. So that's why we've been working as strongly as we can at the local level to negotiate a deal. We got Senate Bill 752 approved, which allowed for a DC component, also allowed for employees that are in the 2.7% plan to, to go to a lower tier, make that election, which we're still working on. But we're trying to solve it. And, and, and when our union put that bill before the Sacramento legislation, 
legislators, the unions went nuts.